Hey guys, it's Mandy Ezzel, back again for another card fight Vanguard deck profile. So hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate to the Patreon. So let's get started. Today's video, it's Link Joker. Chaos. I, th actually this is the only reason why I even like the premium collection in the first place. I was literally just scrolling around on the fandom, wondering what set am I going to hover over for like the next few weeks or so as the cards get released. I saw Chaos in the image of the premium collection, and I was like, I ha I'm in client selection, I have to do this, I have to do this, I said to myself, and I just stared there, and I opened up a separate tab for Chaos, and every day I reloaded it, and I waited for the day where it came to finally have its skill revealed, and it happened, and I've literally been waiting for all of its arts to be in English for me to be able to do this, that and me being able to actually play the fight. So, let's get this started, I've actually tested this deck out myself, and it works pretty well, so let's go. Starter, Micro Hole Draco Kid, 6k base. Auto, when wrote upon, draw a card. Then if your opponent's vanguard's a greater one or greater, get a quick shield. So, you know, pretty good starter. Same starter as always. You get a draw. You get a quick shield. Why is this the starter I picked? Because the Cyber Dragon starter. And Chaos is a Cyber Dragon. Yes, Sword Shield is not in this deck. But, I mean, either Cyber Dragon and Cyber Dragon, something that is literally a Messiah, or something else that is a Deleter. So, you know, gotta pick one, and I pick Dragon. Now on to our triggers. We got the four draw PGs, because... Who doesn't like draw PGs? If you try buying this, you'll most likely go broke. I have tried. I could not afford them. You can imagine where I am right where I am right now. But anyways, yeah, it's a good card. You know, having a draw, having a PG together. If you can get this, do it. If you can buy the premium collection, this comes with one copy of it each. So if you buy four, you get. If you get four of the clan selection, then you get four of this thing. I cannot do that. Because the only place where I could find a case split for it was $65. And they're all out of stock. So can't really get this, unfortunately. But hey, it's still a good card. If you can buy this, get it. It's very important to the deck for many reasons. Because normally, when I build decks, there are like grade 1 tech options. So you could put the PG there if you want. Not with this one. There are no tech options. Build it to the letter. You will not regret it. So, four draws. Then we got 8 crit, 4 Axino, 4 Pulse Monk of the Quaking Foot. Axino, because he's a Cyber Dragon. Quaking Foot, not really any particular reason besides the fact I just he's my second favorite crit in this game. So, I mean, I'm Link Joker, so fair enough. And then the heal. Juvenile Child of Virtual Particles. She just seems like she would fit Chaos more with the heart and her kind of smiling about it. It makes me think, oh, that's something Chaos would do where he pretends to give you a gift and he takes it away from you, which kind of is what he does in V-Series, honestly, so I don't really, I really think these two have a connection here. Anyways, on to the grade ones. Two copies of Sharpened Loop of Despondency, Alanium. Probably should have attempted practicing these names before I actually did this video. 7k base, 10k shield, auto rear guard circle. At the end of the battle that it boosted, if boosted a vanguard, if your opponent's vanguard's grade through a greater and two or more guardians were retired for that battle, retire it and draw two cards. So, you know, Really helpful. It can get you a double draw. I don't really... The one time I did draw this, I didn't really call it. Or I never really used its skill because I had already called something behind Van. And I don't really like to lose rear guards. But in the off chance, you need that draw because sometimes you really need to plus for it. You got to retire it. And sometimes you just got to do things you don't want to do. So it's an exceptional card. Two copies. You might not need it. You might need it. Who knows? Three copies of Spin It All Dragon, 8k base, 10k shield, act rear guard circle, soul boss one, retire this unit, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and bind it face down, and auto, re when retired from rear guard, one of your vanguards gets plus 5k power tons of turn. So, really helpful, you can soul blast and retire it to bind something. You would think the deck uses up a lot of soul blast considering you want to get off chaos every time that you possibly can. It really doesn't with the grade one, so... That's helpful. And then two, when it's retired, you can give your Vanguard plus five. That plus five will not make a difference if your opponent has a PG, because considering that you can put your Vanguard at two crit with like, I don't know, 38k power, depending on how you do it on your first grade three turn, it's, depending on who goes first and second, isn't really that good, but hey, who knows. Anyways, um, really helpful card. The binding factor in this deck you might not think it does a lot, but when Chaos only locks a few cards now, having that extra bind that doesn't cost Counter Blast is really helpful. And I should know, because that's kind of the reason why I won a game. I just kept locking the same rear guard over and over and over again, then just bound his other rear guards 
until they couldn't do anything to me because they had to keep committing from hand to do any form of play style until they just had triggers left in hand. So really helpful. Three copies. Next up, four copies of Lady Battler of the White Dwarf. 8k base, 10k shield. Continuous Vanguard or Rearguard during your turn if you have a face down card in any player's circle or bind zone. This unit gets plus 5k power. That is guaranteed. Either locking or binding was what this deck does. It's going to happen and it gets plus 5. And then auto Vanguard or Rearguard when plays from hand. Look at top 5 and reveal to 1 grade 3 and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck and if you put a card, you got to discard one. So that's really helpful. You can search for Chaos. You can search for your Counter Charger, which I actually did happen once. And if it wasn't for that, I actually would have lost the game. So, you know, really helpful card. Four copies. <clears throat> then four copies of both. One of my favorite looking cards just in general. And one of my favorite Star Vaders in general. Star Vader Craving Claw Dragon. Uh, auto Vanguard or Rearguard, AK base as well. When it attacks... Or the attack it boosted hits a Vanguard. Look at top five, reveal it to one Star Vader, put it into your hand, and shuffle your deck. I love that for two reasons. One, it is not a named once per turn. Actually, there's three reasons. One, it's not a named once per turn. Two, it's not a once per turn in general. And three, you do not have to discard, shove it to solo. You don't have to do anything with it. You get a free plus, and there's no downside. I love that because. Normally, something this broken, considering that it can just, it's basically another Wingo Brave, you would normally, you know, want to once per turn it, or like once turn, or card name restrict it, but no, they didn't. And I love this thing, because it helps me search for chaos, helps me search for other copies of it, because unlike Wingo, it can actually search for itself, and it helps me search for the Grade 2, who I, for some reason, never draw into normally, without having to use this thing to search it out. So, that's really helpful. And then the other skill. Act rearguard circle. If your opponent's vanguard's a grade three or greater, put this whoops, put this unit into your soul and choose up to one of your opponent's locked cards and unlock it. If you unlock a card, choose one of your opponent's rear guards other than that locked unit and lock it. So that's really helpful. It gets you the soul you need for chaos and spinal doll. But also, it's part of the chaos combo. If you don't know what that is, you lock a rear guard with chaos, you give them the force gift. Then, preferably, they have two, two or more gifts for this to work. Then what you do, you use Craving Claw, shove it to Soul, unlocks the thing that you just locked, lock something else, and then Skill of Chaos, you Soul Blast the Craving Claw, retire the rear guard that you just unlocked, they take their two Force Markers, or one of their Force Markers, and then whatever other gift they're using, and then put them on your side, and just like that, you got the Chaos combo, and you paid literally no count. Actually, they paid a count bus for it, but you technically, you paid no Soul Blast for it, so that's really helpful. So four copies. He just looks really cool. And next up, we got four copies of Boundless Taurus, Duhanulus. 10k base, 5k shield, grade 2. Continuous rear guard. If you have a total of two or more face down cards in any fighter's bind zones or circle, this unit gets plus 10. That is a permanent effect, not during your turn, just in general. So that's a 20k base. You got bound cards slash locked cards. This baby's a 20k base. Nothing can stop that. And that's so good. Like, you got to ram into it to get rid of it. This, over, at the start of the game, depending on what how many resources you paid to get rid of your opponent's field to get this out, it wouldn't really do much. But later in the game, oh yeah, this thing punishes your opponent, especially when you got all those force markers piling on it. Really helpful card. Four copies. Four copies of Last Crust Maranol. 5k base, 10k shield. Auto rear guard when placed from hand. If your opponent has a face down card in their vanguard or bind zone, counter blast one, choose two of your opponent's rear guards, bind them face down, and if two cards could not be bound, you counter charge one and soul charge one. So, you know, that's really helpful because you can get rid of an opponent's rear guard. I mean, you get rid of two opponent's rear guards. I mean, it's mainly here for the counter charging and soul charging. Technically, soul charging since the counter blast doesn't really do anything if you do counter charge, but it still does work. Because it can get rid of something on your opponent's board. And if it couldn't get rid of two, which is honestly just amazing. Because that means your opponent's losing more cards besides the lock stuff. You get two just plus for free. Or if they, do, if they don't lose two, you get to counter charge one and soul charge one. So either way, your opponent's losing something and you gaining something. So really helpful. Four copies. Next up, four copies of another one of my favorite looking cards. I don't know why. I like the Star Vader arts this time around. Uh, Bisection Star Vader Z Cronium. 10k base, 5k shield, with a really cool looking art. Like, I swear, if I had a playmat for each of the star new Star Vader cards, or just like a playmat with all three of them in general, I would genuinely abuse that. 
All of you know I do not like using play mats or sleeves. If you gave me a play mat or a sleeve with any of those, with any of the three new Star Vaders, I will genuinely use them. That's just a warning. But anyways, auto Vanguard or Rear Guard. When placed, if your opponent, if you have a Vanguard with Star Vader in its card name, Counterblast one, your opponent looks at top card, they lock it in an open rear guard circle, and if that locked card was in the back row, you get to draw a card and give it plus 10 to end of turn. So that's really helpful. Normally, you'd want to put your lock card in the back row so that you know you have the extra front row rear guard to attack with. Maybe you want, maybe you want, ah, maybe you might want to put it in the back center so that you know you can call boosters to the other sides. But now, if you do call it to the back row your opponent gets a draw out of it and yeah draw doesn't seem that important but this is vanguard we're talking about over like the past few years they've gotten to the point where any form of a plus could possibly be the death of you especially drawing wise so you know giving them that draw on paper doesn't sound too bad but when you're actually in game match you don't want to just give it to them for free and the plus 10 so you kind of just want to call it to the front row, let that circle be locked for God cares anymore, and then just don't let them get the plus off it. And then the other ability, continuous rear guard circle. If your opponent's vanguard's a grade three or greater, and he or she has a locked card, all of your vanguards get original critical becomes two. So that's really helpful. It basically gives you a force two on the vanguards. So there is no point to ever use force two in this deck, unless you were trying to kill your opponent very quickly, which at that point I would question... Like, if they're at 4 damage, somehow, you're a grade 3, they're a grade 3, they're at 4 damage, you have yet to get a gift, then yeah, force 2. If you can get 2 force 2s, do it. Because you could probably kill them. Yep, that being said, depending on what's in their hand. But you know, that's still helpful. Making sure that your Vanguard has for big numbers with force 1, then having the extra critical on it, like a basic force 2. That's really good. So, 4 copies. Next up, on to grade 3s. 4 copies of Nordstum Dragon. 13k base, auto, no gift by the way, auto rearguard circle when placed. If your vanguard is a cyber dragon, choose one of your opponent's grade two or greater rearguards, bind it face down, retire this unit, and counter charge one. So, you know, a lot of people, they like to run a sword sword with chaos. A lot of people don't. I'm one of the people who don't. I have a chaos sword shield build, but I don't really like to use it that often. I feel like it's kind of bad to have two units that have vanguard restrictive skills. Minus, like, Chaos is one skill that activates on rear, but that involves them having a lock card, so... Kind of don't like that, especially with all the cards that involve Starvaders. If you want to one Swords with Chaos, it is still a good build, I just don't like it myself. But anyways, on to actual Nordstrom. That's a good ability. He binds something on the board, and then you get a counter charge out of it. That has literally helped me. I was out of counter blast, all I needed was one, so I could pull off the Chaos combo, get two gifts, and be able to win the game. If it wasn't for Lady Battler giving me this from its search, I would not have been able to win because, I, like I said, I was out of Counter Blast. But thanks to this, I got to call it, use its skill, bind something, counter charge, retire it, and I got to lock something else, and then I got to pull out the Chaos combo. So it was really helpful. So four copies, because you always need Counter Charge, especially if there's only one, or like one that you're comfortable using. And finally, the big man himself, the thing that's going in the thumbnail, and the thing I love the most, Chaos! Star Vader, Chaos, Breaker, Dragon. Okay, anyways, now that I got that out of the way, no gift, which at first I literally didn't notice. Like, the second this got revealed, I focused on the skill. I didn't even see the gift marker until after my friend told me that, hey, are you fine with Chaos not having a gift? As I was uh, talking about it and how much I love it, and I realized, oh, it doesn't have a gift, does it? But I didn't really mind because I... I actually like its ability regardless, and giving it a gift would be a bit too broken. Anyways, 13k base, uh, awesome art, like I said, sleeve. If you want to send me like a sleeve or a playmat of any of these new Star Vaders, or all three of them together, I would genuinely use it every time I played this deck. Or any deck, for that matter, that has involved Link, Link Choker. Anyways, skills. Continuous, Vanguard, or Rear Guard. During your turn, if your opponent has a locked card, this unit gets plus 10. That's a guaranteed Force Marker. Your opponent has a locked card... Force marker on literally any circle that's a chaos. That is a b beautiful thing. Beautiful. And then act vanguard once per turn, counter blast one, your opponent gets a force gift, and you choose one of your opponent's rear guards and lock it. So that's good. They get the force gift per first. So say, for example, I don't know why someone would ever do this, but like they put the force marker on the only rear guard they have, then they have to lock it. I don't know why anyone would do that, but if they did, you could lock it. 
or say like they put they have a full field they put a force marker somewhere probably in the back row because they don't want you lock, locking the things in the back row since that wouldn't be helpful to you anyways you could counter blast it lock it and then you know they just don't get the plus off the force marker but either way really helpful ability gets to lock down your opponent's field and it's only one counter blast so it's good especially compared to its zero counterpart which sucks ass and finally it's third skill auto vanguard circle when your opponent's lock card is unlocked soul blast run retire one of those unlocked units draw a card and your opponent removes a total of two markers from his or her circles or protects from his or her hand and you get an imaginary gift force for each marker or protect removed so that is both that's like actually amazing i don't know if that's what i'm saying it's both so yes you have to soul blast for it which in some cases does suck because you might be losing out for some reason you might not have seen any of your craving claws and you've been seeing all your spin doll and chaos breakers and you haven't been seeing your last crust either or anything in this deck that can soul charge so you know you might just be running low on soul at some point but it's still good because you can retire your the unlocked unit you get to draw a card just exactly like the old chaos used to do but you get to remove two markers from anywhere and then you get two force markers in return most likely there's going to be force ones because there's no reason to pick force two unless your opponent has like very low hand cards and they're at four damage and you got like a whole hand of chaos in that case go for it but otherwise not really worth picking force two but that's still useful because if even if they cannot remove two they still got to remove as much as they can and then you still get markers out of it or you can just you know use the skill to nuke a rear guard i mean say your opponent has a pesty rear guard that you just want to get rid of but you can't necessarily hit over it such as um sweet capricorno or sweet i don't know how to say it but clear out dragon from takikaze that if it has three or more gauges you can't touch it but it has two gauges on it so it's barely out of the range you lock it you unlock it you murder it the second you get the chance just so that it can't bother you you know stuff like that and it's helpful to get plays like that off and then the reason why i love chaos and the reason why i sat by this the whole time i like chaos like, similar to the reason why Noah Hichizaki from the anime liked Chaos. He just thinks it's cool. I like Chaos because I think it's cool. I hated playing it in G because I hate control decks with a burning passion. I hate control decks. Chaos was the only control deck I ever spammed, and that's just because I liked looking at it. Honestly, if Chaos didn't have to be a control deck, I wouldn't have made it a control deck. Because control decks always are annoying. They just do the same thing over and over and over again, and they prevent your opponent from doing what they're supposed to do. I like to fight my opponent when they're going at me full blast, even if that means I'm going to die a very, 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 very painful death. I still want to fight them at full blast and not just be locking down and blocking all their options to do anything to me. The new Chaos, I like a lot because he doesn't feel too controlling. Yeah, he can lock two cards in total if you combine him with uh, bisection. I mean, if you have multiple bisections, which I doubt you would call because that's a counter blast per call, it would drain all your counter blasts. But you can basically lock two cards per turn if you use one bisection per turn along with chaos. And that doesn't just feel like a control deck. It feels like your opponent gets to at least do something to you. And it just feels like a balanced fight. So I like the new chaos. It doesn't feel too controlly. It doesn't feel too uncontrolly. It feels just right, and it gets enough power to where it can hold off on its own when it's not too controlly. So I like this deck a lot. On to, and a lot of people probably disagree with me, probably saying that that's the point of control decks. They're not supposed to be fair. Yes, I agree with you, but at the same time, I don't care. I like Chaos, and I wish it wasn't a control deck intent to. Some default it now isn't, and it fits my style perfectly. Anyways, on to the gifts. First up, we got Ace Force Ones. If you want to buy this deck to a letter, buy the same amount of gifts I tell you to. It's going to save you money later when like you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm in, I have a budget of, let's just say $60. For some ungodly reason, this deck is under $60. It should not be, considering yesterday when I, text, when I checked TCG, Chaos Alone was 20 bucks a piece, putting you over 80 if you wanted to get four copies of it. Only Chaos Alone, by the way. So that's just saying something. But if you want to follow this deck to letter, you got eight force gifts on either side because there is no reason to not run them both at the same number considering whatever one you do pick, whenever you use Chaos Go, you're going to have to keep making those markers so you don't want to just run out of them and then be disqualified. But anyways, what they do, force one, if you don't know, just if it's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard, it gets plus 10k power during your turn, whatever circle it's on, and it does stack, which is helpful considering that you can get two at a time with Chaos's skill. 
and then force two, it makes the original critical become two. If your opponent is at grade three or greater, they already got a gift, you just chaos them so that they have two gifts, use the Craving Claw, get two force twos if they're like four damage, they have a low hand, put them on the rear guards, call by section to the back row, preferably behind the center so you can get bigger columns out of it. Vanguard gets plus 10, it also gets plus one crit, then you call two more Chaos to the Lock Circles, call boosters behind them, you're hitting for big ass numbers, your opponents might die from this, I don't know if they will, if they don't die, so be it, but still. At the same time, most likely it's going to pick Force 1 though, because it gets you more power at a more consistent rate, and if you stack a bunch of Chaoses on them, your opponent can't do shit to you. And on to the Quick Show, which is the... I completely forgot this was here, actually. And one of your units that's being attacked gets plus 5k power to end of battle. So, you know, helpful, gets you 5k power. I don't know why it gives it power. I feel like for something called a shield, it should give you, you know, have an actual 5k shield. I don't mind the power, it just bothers me that it's called a shield and it doesn't actually give a shield, when to some form and extent it does. It just bothers me. Well, that was the deck. Sorry for rambling on for a bit. It's just a topic I really like about how it's not, how it's no longer control deck. Also, I forgot to um, read its card text. Isn't this a blessing? A wonderful wish? Or to the thing I believe it was in something else. It was either a fan one or it was it's something else tra- or it was a different translation where it was a wonderful gift. Here, I mean, sorry. Here, have a gift. I'll take it from you later. It's true, because he will take it from you later. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is one of my favorite decks in Standard. It was one of my favorite decks in Premium, minus the controlling thing. So now that it has no giant massive amount of control over the opponent, I really enjoyed this deck. I hope you enjoy it too if you play this to the exact letter. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. My second channel should be launching next week which is focused on Beyblade, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and go subscribe to it. The link is in the description below under the title of Blazing Resonance. And um, I also have a Twitch channel, so if you want to go to my Twitch channel, also in the description. Okay, there we go. Now I'm done with my outro. So if you guys enjoy, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and join to the Patreon. See you all in the next one. Don't forget to stand up your vanguard.